After we save, we can see immediately that the code building, executing, and then running the new, uh, the new code. Make. Exactly. Make is a, a build automation tool that uses a make file to define rules and dependencies for building and running our code. Think about it as like a wrapper for other commands that will run other commands easily with one command. And we can see that in a few minutes after we starting to write the make file. But before we do that, let's just have a, like a, a brief of make, like what is the difference between make and CMake? Because there's another tool called CMake that is vastly different from make. So make is a build automation tool while CMake is a build system generator. So basically CMake builds the build system that is make and will allow you to create make file automatically. This is basically the main difference between the two. Now, why using make, you might ask? Well, to simplify the development process, imagine that you have multiple commands that you wanna run at the same time. And instead of writing those commands each time again and again and again, you can define them in a make file that will make it easier for running one command. For example, you say make build and it will build uh, your code and to compile it to binaries to different platforms from one command. You can also create a file structure with one command, say make in it, and it will initialize the structure of your project. And to see those things in action, we're gonna go ahead and create our project. So here I have a, an empty uh, directory here called learning make. And in this directory, we're going to initialize a new a Go project. I'm gonna use Go here because it's a compiled language that could compile to multiple platforms. So we can demo the make uh, usage for Go projects. You can do whatever, you can use whatever language you have if you like to use make with it, that's fine, okay? Uh, of course, the language should be compiled or at least has the need to compile so you can have this kind of useful use case. We're going to initialize a new Go project here. We're going to call it, for example, learning make simply same uh, folder name now of course there's no go in it well it's actually go mod in it right and now after we created our or we initialized our go project we're going to write a simple you know main dot go file that will have a func main that this func basically just logs It logs out something right that's basically the code that we have right now and if we want to run this code but we'll go ahead and say go run dot right it will compile and run our code or if we want to build it uh, or compile it we're going to go ahead and say go build uh, we're going to specify which director to build from right there and we can see that we have a binary right here called learning make and if we want to run this binary we would go ahead and execute it like this right so instead of writing go build and of course if you have a different environment that you want to build for you're going to have different command like for example having the os flag uh, and other flags for explicitly choosing what os and what uh, system or what architecture to build for you can have a bunch of commands and if you want to make it easier for yourself we're going to write a make file first before we do that we're going to go ahead and remove the binary from here now we're going to go ahead and enter our editor, being that new of or whatever editor that you use. But before that, we're going to go ahead and open up another pane here so we can run the commands from here. OK, let's start by writing the make file. So we'll create a make file like this with the M being capital. And in this make file, we'll define commands that will have other commands in them that we can run with make. OK, so let's start with the init command. This could be a command that you use to initialize the project st structure of your project, all right? Or the file structure of your project. And to do that, we're gonna have commands like mkdir, which builds a directory. We're gonna use the flag p, so it won't give us an error if the directory is already there. And we're gonna, re for example, uh, create a directory called build, right? If we, uh, if, we're, if we save this file and go back to the terminal, we can run now make init and this will run this command behind it, right? And we can see after we run it, it calls out this command. And if we uh, list our files, we can see that we have a build directory right here, basically meaning that we created this directory with make, all right? Now, if we don't want to see this 
the command calls out like this or verbosely like this, we can use a flag here or not a flag, uh, a syntax here. That is the at syntax. This will make makes it uh, silently or it will call this command silently. We can add another um, directory, for example, handlers or whatever. We can see now if we run the make init again, it will create two projects as you can see, or two directories, as you can see, for example, handlers and build directory, right? Let's say we want to also uh, add some message that allows us to understand what's going, what's going on with this command, right? So for example, we want to go ahead and use the echo to echo some message in the terminal. We can say, for example, creating file structure, right? And we can, of course, add this at, at symbols to make it silently call this command. If we save and go back to our terminal, we can simply run make init and it will tell us that we're creating the file structure and exactly it does that. As you can see, it creates the build and handlers di directories, right? So now let's add uh, the uh, useful commands for our project. Let's say we want a build command and that build command will run the compiler of Go to build our project, different binaries for different system and different system architectures, right? So for this video, we're gonna use the Go build, right? To build just the simply the command inside the build directory. And to do that, we're gonna go and add the flag O and we're gonna choose build directory and we're gonna call this a binary or app, right? And we're gonna choose the current directory to build from. And of course, we're gonna add the add symbol to make it silent. And we can also add message here, a message like being called, for example, building our application. Right, if we go ahead right now and run our code using the make build, it doesn't work. And the reason why it doesn't work because here we have in our file structure a, a folder or a directory called build already. And so the default behavior of make is that it will call whatever directories and uh, check it if it's up to, up to date with some other stuff, right? That's the default behavior of make. Now, if we want to override this default behavior and um, use our you know, build keyword, even if we have a build directory here, to do that, we're going to use uh, a new command in build or in make file that is called dot phony. Basically, this tells make that to run this command, even if we have a directory called uh, build in the same directory that we're running make from, right? So we're going to choose the which commands that going to be phony, which will be the build command. If we save it, go back and run the make build again, we can see building and now if we you know, run the tree structure, we can see that we have under our uh, build directory, we have a binary called app. And we can run this by running like that, right? And now we can see that exactly, we see the log uh, message from the Go program, okay? So now let's say we want another command, say it is run, this command will run the, uh, the app, right? So we can echo, for example, and um, run the binary that is located in the build and the app, right? Saving this, we can run use make run now to execute our app, right? We can also silent this call. And now let's say we want to watch for changes, right? So let's say we have a project that we want to see the updates right away. We want to auto compile and auto build our program and so we can execute it right away after we save the changes, right? As this could be, you know, useful in web projects and even in game uh, projects, right? So to do that, we're going to use a command called enter. And this command, basically, it is useful to create hot reloading. We're going to bind that command with an output of other command to automatically run another command. You can, you will see what, what I mean in a minute. So we will create a command, a subcommand for the make uh, command. We're going to call this command watch, right? Because it will watch our files and run uh, and execute rebuilds and execute the program for us, right? So what, what does watch do? Now, before we do that, we need to make run dependent on build. 
meaning that this run it will build the binary again and then execute it right so what we have to, to do right now or what we can check this by going back to the main dot go and here for example we're going to change the uh, code from here basically like that and now if we simply just if we simply just run the make run command it will auto build and run the program just like that you can see building then executing and then it executed the new code this is useful this will be useful in a minute that if we go for example back to the main file or the make file here we can define our watch um, command right in the watch command we can echo a message say for example watching for changes and run uh, at the enter command or byte an output to the enter command so we can uh, automatically run the run command right uh, I feel like I'm saying run too much all right so we can go ahead and say ls use the command ls to list the files that are inside our this directory or the current directory that's make is called from and we're gonna use the this symbol to list all the go files right so basically we're just gonna go ahead and uh, see if any go files is changed right we're gonna pipe this output to the enter command make sure the enter command is installed in your system enter basically is a utility tool to run a command uh, when the output changes and you can pipe whatever output from whatever command to to enter we're going to use the r flag basically it tells us to terminate the the old process and run a new process whatever this output changes right and we're going to go, go ahead and use make run so basically whenever the output changes we're going to go ahead and uh, execute the make run which will uh, execute the build command building our code and then execute that binary awesome now of course we're going to go ahead and make this less verbose and we're going to go ahead and check it out going back to our terminal here we're going to go ahead and run the make watch command so make watch right there and now we can see that it watches for changing building executing and then runs the program right there right but let's say we want to change or let's say we develop the program but we want to you know execute some changes let's say we want to change this to maybe add another print here right after we save we can see immediately that the code building executing and then running the new the new code exactly for example if we change from log to fmt let's say we're going to go ahead and use fmt to print a new line to make it different uh, you know style right so let's say we're going to use also hello right here after we save immediately we can see the changes happening right here and this is very useful in projects again like game development or web development and i use it all the time to create my projects and to auto watch the files and run other commands now an extra bonus for this video we will do is that we will go ahead and see uh, let's see if we if i can you know show that folder it is i think in the don't make right and we have colors.mk now basically i vibe coded <laughs> this folder with claude and this is basically a folder that allows us to have a function in make that is called log this function will basically logs whatever we have with some colors basically just have some you know beautiful colors in our terminal whatever we want to print some statement in there currently using echo we will replace it with one of these functions so let's go ahead and do that go back to our make file here in the make file we're going to replace our echo statements right there because they're not really cool you know like they're they're plain they're just boring so we're going to use these functions which basically a wrapper for this log function which basically a wrapper for echo with some colors defined in here in ascii or ansi uh, standard right so let's go ahead and do that of course if you want this file uh, you can comment down below and i will add it in the description below and that's that so let's just use for example the info here the log info to use this file we have to include it in our uh, make because currently this make file doesn't understand what's in there like it doesn't 
uh, know which functions to call from, we have to include it, basically import it. So we can use the word include, right? And we're gonna go ahead and include file that is in the home directory in the dot make, it's called colors.mk, just like that. Now, after we included this, we can use one of these functions. So we will use the call uh, syntax to call a function. And to do that, we're gonna use the add symbol to make it less verbose. And then we're gonna use the dollar sign, then using the call keyword like this, and then the function name. Then we're gonna pass any uh, arguments to that function. So for example, we wanna log this statement right here. So we're gonna basically just take that from here and put that right here, basically like that. Now, if we go back to our terminal to just check on what, what happens right there. So if we go ahead and run the, the command again called make init, we can see that exactly we have it in this nice format. We could do the same for the other commands. Right, and we can of course make this not log, but log uh, success, for example, to make it, you know, print us a success command because this will happen innocently. Or maybe you can do it after you build your structure. It doesn't really matter. Here we can have log info, right? This is the info of building, so, or maybe a step, right? Go ahead and log step. All of these are functions that are defined in the colors in the colors uh, make file, right? Here, for example, also we can have a step, but this step is called, for example, running the program and uh, maybe executing or whatever, right? And you can do a very good syntax here that you can, for example, have this like that empty and then add the command right away. So you don't have to you know, basically add two calls right here. And we can also do that to the last command that is watching. And this will maybe like maybe be debug, right? Assembly just like that. If we save and go back and clear our folder, if we run the make watch command, we can see that our debugging, we were gonna build. And this step is basically what we have here. So that's why it's not really shown anything we call for example executing the binary and we're going to go ahead and see that in action when we run the make watch command when we run the make watch command we're going to see watching building executing and then this is the uh, the output of the code right if we're going to back go back to the main.c and if we want to change you know to the change this code to see if it's working and you can see now redoing the steps so it's automatically detect that there is changes and rerun the program for that so that's it for this video we learned what is make how to use it in our projects why is it useful to have and how to create whole reloading with make uh, if you like this video obviously you would like this video because you reached the end so if you like this video don't forget to hit the like button hit the subscribe button and uh, you know maybe write in the comments what do you want to see next? Of course, I have a lot of plans or other videos that I want to do, but I want to make sure that I only give you the stuff that you need. I want to make sure that the videos that I post actually useful to my audience. So comment down below what do you want to see next, and I'll see you in the next video.